Good morning everyone and welcome to the weekly fundamental podcast. I'm Rasmi Goza from Kotak Securities. On the international markets, last week was quite negative for global markets as the MSCI World Index corrected by 3.4% and MSCI Emerging Markets corrected by 4.5%. The US markets were down around 3.3% while most Asian markets were down around 4.2%. In Q4 of last year, US GDP increased by 1% leading to a full year contraction of 3.5% for calendar year 20. It shows the recovery from the pandemic is losing steam as the US dollar 3 trillion relief in money gets exhausted. The Federal Reserve last week left its benchmark interest rates near zero and pledged to continue injecting money into the economy through bond purchases. Last week seemed quite strange and weird. as we heard of some crazy moves in lesser known stocks in the us gamestop an unknown stock to indian investors became the talk of the town due to its rise from us dollar 19 on 31st december to us dollar 325 last week a gain of nearly 17 times within a month the euphoria that is going on in some of the most hated stocks in the us is quite dangerous as there is zero consideration towards fundamentals and valuations last week i came across across an interesting article in bloomberg which talks about investor frenzy in spacs that is special purpose acquisition companies the spac craze in the us continues unabated as more than 90 blank check companies which raised nearly us dollar 26 billion started trading in january more than 60 additional spacs have filed for ipos since the start of this year investors are clearly in the risk on mode in the ipo market an update on us earning season 172 companies out of the s&p 500 index have declared results overall earnings growth has been muted with just 2% aggregate earnings growth recorded in the december quarter however technology and financials are reporting healthy earnings growth around 22 technology companies that have declared results have reported 22% earnings growth in december quarter and 51 financials that have declared results have reported 18% earnings growth in december quarter the cboe volatility index has now surged to 33 without any major event indicating volatile times ahead the msci emerging market index which had gone above the pre gfc peak two weeks back has now gone below that mark further correction would indicate a double top formation in the msci emerging market index coming to india the indian markets also ended in the red last week with nifty 50 and bsa sensex falling by around 5.2% the broader indices fell less than nifty 50 indicating some kind of etf selling which could have put pressure on the benchmark indices reliance automobiles and it stocks led the downfall an update on uh, indian earnings q3 earnings have turned out to be very strong 27 nifty 50 companies have declared results with aggregate earnings growth of 30% earnings growth is spread across all the sectors in mid caps there has been a 34% positive earnings surprise in the nifty mid cap 100 index and in the broader index that is bsc 500 year on year earnings growth in q3 has been staggering 47% after june we saw fis turning net sellers in indian equities on a weekly basis based on the provisional figures of last friday fis have pulled out around 10000 crore last week Last week we also saw FII selling for continuous 5 days in a row which is not a good sign. Interestingly DIIs have turned net buyers on last Thursday and Friday with net buying of rupees 4180 crore in these two days. The global markets are delicately poised as the S&P 500 has now touched its 50 day moving average placed at 3715. The MSCI World Index has closed marginally below the 50 day moving average. and nifty 50 also closed below the 50 day moving average of 13743 points another point to notice is that reliance has broken its 200 day moving average placed at 1966 which is a big thing as the 200 day moving average of nifty is still way below at 11558 mark if the budget does not come up to expectation then we see nifty touching 13000 level very soon we still need to wait and see how the budget pans out and market closes on monday and tuesday considering the strong earning spring that is coming we expect more upward revision in future earnings estimates from the lows 
of last year as and bloomberg consensus estimates for fy21 esti- uh, 21 has gone up by 14% and that of fy22 has gone up by around 10% the combination of market correction and higher earnings revision could provide valuation support at lower levels hence we are not expecting any major crash in indian markets a normal course correction should be good to remove the excesses we saw in the valuation recently from the peak of 23 times on forward pe basis the nifty 50 now trades at forward pe of 21 times and around 17.5 times on fy23 estimates hence on a two year forward basis valuations look reasonable now as compared to the five years earning cagr of 2.6% for nifty 50 we are now expecting earning cagr of nifty 50 to be around 20% for the next three years that is fy20 to 23 a healthy expected earning cagr of 18 to 20% and higher bond pe multiple could justify higher pe multiples for indian equities going forward in terms of supports there are multiple levels between 11000 and 13750 that can be watched in future the probability of nifty 50 testing the previous top top trend line breakout of 13000 seems very high now if for some reason the msci world index goes and test its 200 day moving average which is 10% below the current levels then nifty 50 can break 13000 levels the major support levels below 13000 are 12430 which was the last january's peak before budget and then comes the 200 day moving average placed at 11588 and the 200 weekly moving average placed at around 11000 Investors who had missed out investing earlier or who have created cash can look at deploying money as and when Nifty goes to around thirteen thousand levels. However, one needs to have a two-year view while deploying money because there is high probability of Nifty remaining in some consolidation phase for majority of calendar year twenty-one. We will take a fresh view on sectors and stocks post-budget and once majority of earnings have come through. On a global scale, the record retail participation. The speculative element in FNO segment and surge in cryptocurrencies somewhere indicates bubble formation in parts of the market. Not sure how this is going to unfold when things cool down. On the other hand, the massive stimulus which is likely to continue in this calendar year and economic recovery which should provide support to markets at lower levels. Hence, it makes sense to buy in any dip deep correction with a two to three year time frame. So that's it from my side. have a great week and have a great time going ahead thanks